بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Among the women whom had an impact on the life of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were two of the first women the Prophet actually had his first encounter with. The first one is his mother and her name was Amina bint Wahb bin Abdi Manaf ibn Zahra ibn Kilab ibn Murrah ibn Ka'b ibn, ibn Lu'ay ibn Ghalib. And they say that she had only one brother and his name was Yaghuth ibn Wahb. The tribe of Zuhra or Banu Zuhra, they say that we are the maternal uncles of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam because Amina was from them. And we know that the Prophet's father alayhi salatu wasalam, his maternal uncles were from Medina. So the Prophet used to say that my maternal uncles are from Medina. Now, historical resources did not document a lot about the Prophet's mother, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, due to the fact that it was not a time of documentation and no one knew at the time that she would be the mother of the greatest man ever to walk the earth. All what we know about her is that she was a woman of high and prestigious lineage. She was an, a woman of honor and a great family. And this is why most Arabs usually look after. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, a woman is sought after due to her beauty, due to her wealth, due to her lineage, and due to her religious practice. So get the one with the religious commitment or may your hand grab on dust. Meaning that if you choose other than the one with proper religious commitment, then as if you have gained nothing. Therefore, Amina was sought after. We do not know anything about her private life, how beautiful she was, but we know that she comes from a very honorable family. How? Did she get to marry Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib? The stories say that Abdul Muttalib had one son, and this son was called Al Harith. But first of all, who is Abdul Muttalib? We know that our Prophet's name is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Ibn Abdul Muttalib, Ibn Hashim. So, what is Abdul Muttalib? And was there a god that the pagans worshipped by the name of Al Muttalib? Actually, Al Muttalib is the name of his uncle. And the father of Abdullah's name was Shaybatul Hamd. Hashim and Al-Muttalib were brothers. And Hashim married a woman in Medina. And she gave birth to Abdullah. Uh, she gave birth to Al-Muttalib. Let me rephrase that. 
So Hashim, the grandfather of Abdullah, who is the father of Prophet ﷺ, got married in Medina. And he had a son by the name of Shaybat al-Hamd. Soon after, Hashim died. So his brother, Al-Muttalib, when Shaybat al-Hamd grew up to be a young man of 14 years of age, traveled from Mecca to Medina to fetch his nephew and bring him back to his country. So when they traveled back to Mecca, when Al-Muttalib and his nephew, who's a 14-year-old boy by the name of Shaybat al-Hamd, entered Mecca, the people of Mecca recognized Al-Muttalib, recognized those who were with him, but did not recognize this boy. So they thought that this boy was a slave which Al-Muttalib bought on his journey. So they called him Abd Al-Muttalib. And Al-Muttalib kept on saying, no, no, this is Shaybat al-Hamd. He's my nephew. He's not my slave. So the name stuck to him and his name became Abd Al-Muttalib, the slave of Al-Muttalib. So Al-Muttalib now grew up to become a very respected, honorable man of Mecca. He was one of the dignitaries of Mecca and the master of the people of Quraysh, the master of Banu Hashim and Banu Al-Muttalib. Abd Al-Muttalib had a son and he saw in a vision someone coming to him, telling him about Tayba, about Barra, about this, about different names, and then in conclusion, told him to dig up Zamzam. Now we all know the well of Zamzam and the story of Hajar and her son Ismail, peace be upon him, when left long, long time ago, centuries ago in Mecca where there was nothing. And how Jibreel came and dug the well of Zamzam, which kept on giving water to the Muslims ever since. So he saw the location. He got the command in his dream to dig it up. So he went to dig it up and it's close to the Haram, to the Kaaba. So the people started shouting at him, you're insane, what are you doing? And he told them that this is Zamzam. I was told to dig it up. They didn't believe him and they ridiculed him. So he dug it up. Once the water started gushing, people started saying that we have a share in it. He tried to defend it and say, no, this is mine. I was the one who saw the dream and I want, I'm the one who dig it. So I'm the one responsible for it. They would not listen to him. And he had only one son, so he had no protection. So he vowed that if Allah were to give him 10 sons, that he will slaughter one of them as a sacrifice. Soon after, he got married, he got children, and now he has 10 of them. So he has to fulfill his vow. So he drew the lots to know which one to choose from the 10. And it fell on Abdullah, the youngest and the most beloved to his heart. So he did not know what to do. The people advised him to sacrifice 10 camels, but first draw the lots between 10 camels and Abdullah. And the lots came to Abdullah. So they said, add another 10. So he added 10, becoming 20 camels. Again, Abdullah, 30, 50, 90, 100. And then the lots fell on the camels. So he sacrificed 100 camels joyfully and saved his son from being slaughtered. Some say that since then, the blood money for someone who kills someone by mistake or intentionally is 100 camels till date. 
And this is in our Islamic Sharia. Being happy with his son being freed, he went and chose to him one of the best of Quraysh's women. And that was Amina bin Wahab. He was 24 years of age, and she was 13 years of age. And this was normal for girls to marry at an early age, as early as 9 or 10. He stayed with her for 10 days. Then he left with a caravan to Syria for trade. On their way back, he fell sick, stayed in Medina for a while, only to die and to be buried there. Amina was two months pregnant with our Prophet She heard the news, heartbroken. She lived on the memory of these 10 nights that she had spent with the love of her life. The pregnancy was quite easy and not difficult. Once she gave birth to our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, she, as many of the women of Quraysh, sent her newborn infant to be suckled at the Badia, the Bedouins, who lived on open land in tents so that their bodies would become strong, immune to diseases, and the tongue would be fluent in Arabic, not corrupt due to the different languages. And we will come to the story of how he was given to Halima as saadiyya The Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, as a child, used to be brought every year so that they can take the wages of taking care of him and for him to see his mother and to see his grandfather maybe for a month or two and then go back with his family, Halima and his father through suckling. When he was six years of age, the training, if you may say, was over, and now he is back with his mother. His mother took him to visit the maternal uncles of his father. They stayed there for a whole month. And on their way back, Amina fell sick, and she died, and she was buried at an area called al Abwa. Now, the Prophet والسلام, did not live long with his mother. And you can say that he did not know her that well when she died at the age of 20. And he was about six to seven years of age. However, we can guarantee and we are certain that she gave him love, affection, and care that remained with him 50 years later. In Sahih al-Imam Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, once traveled and passed by the Abwa, and his companions saw him weeping. And they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, tell us what is happening so that we can weep and join you as well. He said, I requested my Lord to seek forgiveness for my mother, and he denied me. So I wept. And we know that the Prophet was denied because the Muslims are not permitted to seek forgiveness 
for someone who died as a non-Muslim. And we, as Muslims, would pay anything we possess. We would sacrifice our own parents and loved ones just for the mother of the Prophet ﷺ to be accepted as a Muslim. But this is not something that we feel and hope for because it's the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. And no one can be more merciful than Allah the Almighty. And this is religion. Yes, we would have loved that the Prophet's mother would be admitted to paradise and that he would be granted the permission to seek forgiveness for her. But it's not in our hands. This is Allah's law. This is the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. Then the Prophet said, alayhi salam, I sought permission from Allah to visit her grave and Allah gave me permission to do so. You can tell by the amount of sorrow in the Prophet's heart والسلام, that made him weep and cry over a mother he had not seen or been with except for few months. Yet the amount of love she gave her son still resonated with him even after five or six decades down the line. This is how men feel about their mothers, how strong emotions they have towards their mothers. And this is how Islam honored the mothers. Now, the other woman is Harima. And it's an issue of dispute whether she accepted Islam later on or not. And inshallah, she is a Muslim and among the companions, Halima bint Abi Dhu'ayb. And her father, Abu Dhu'ayb's name is Abdullah ibn al-Harith. She tells us about how she got the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and was honored to be his mother through suckling. She said, we came to Mecca as we do every year, pitching for a newborn that needed to be suckled and raised in the outskirts where the grazing land is, where all the herds are. This is the habit of the people of Mecca. So we all went. I, she saw, talks about it herself, had a son and he never let us sleep because I could not give him any milk because we were in drought and famine. We went to Mecca on my mule and we had a camel which had no milk in her to feed us at all. When we came to Mecca, we came late because of how tired the mule and the camel were. So everybody went ahead of us. And every woman from my tribe that they showed her the Prophet Muhammad, they asked, where is his father? When they were told that he was an orphan, they rejected him. What would we do with an orphan when we want money from his father and his father is not alive? When she arrived late, there was no other child to take. So she took the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, so that no one would say that she came back empty handed. That night, the moment she received the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, her breasts were filled with milk. The Prophet drank and had his full. His brother drank and had his full and went to sleep. The first night they had slept in months. Not only that, even the camel, the she-camel, her husband went and milked it and they all had their meal to the full. And he told his wife, this boy is a blessed soul. Take good care of him. 
he went and he was raised there in the open ground, in the grazing grounds, playing with the children, nothing so special but things that made people suspicious. Once Halima went to look for her son, Muhammad, and he was not around. And it was so hot that the herds and the camels were on the ground resting. After some distance, she found him with his sister. And she said to his elder sister, what are you doing in the middle of the day under the hot sun? She said, mother, I didn't do anything. He kept on walking and there was this cloud on top of him. Wherever he stood, it stood. And wherever he moved, it moved, shading him. And then she tells us about the miraculous surgery that the prophet had on the hands of Jibreel and Israfil, peace be upon them. Just when he was five or so years of age, two men came and they made him lie on his back, opening his chest to his belly button and extracting his guts and washing it in a bowl of gold with zamzam water then extracting his heart and taking something black out of it, then replacing everything back and stitching it all as it was. Halima and her husband were terrified when they came to the rescue and found the boy there a little bit pale. And they asked him, he told them what had happened. So they took him back to his mother and his mother told them, that this is nothing. I know my son will grow to be something else because I saw in my vision this and that. And she comforted them. They took him back. And then when the period or the training was over, they brought him back to his mother only to lose his mother when he was again six years of age to be taken care of by his, un by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, until he was eight years of age, then to die, his, gra his grandfather's death was also one of the tragedies that the Prophet ﷺ had undergone, only to be taken care of by his uncle, Abu Talib, and we all know what happened afterwards. Two great women who took care of our Prophet ﷺ, who had a print on his life, an impact on his upbringing to women around the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatu al-ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.